Okay, so we're using the map elements from uh, the end game scenario, but we're just playing uh, a cooperative mission here. Um, we're saying that near Klingon space, a aperture opened up, and uh, three Borg cubes and a Borg sphere have appeared, and they're guarding that aperture. Two hundred forty um, points. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It's quite a few points. Uh, we're using all the rules from the end game scenario, uh, but we've taken two hundred points to go against it. Uh, um, my friend has a Borg Sphere uh, 4270 with the uh, independent flagship that gives it battle stations. He's got uh, Borg blade, a blade of Armor and Feedback Wave and... Um, pulse. Yeah. The Feedback Pulse, sorry. Uh, seven of Nine and a Tactical Drone and Tribbles. <laughs> it's legal because uh, it's an independent thing. Oh, you need, do you need Sneer... sneer Cyrano Jones with that? No. This is Cyrano Jones. Oh, that is Cyrano Jones. That's right. That's cool. So Cyrano Jones is on that Borg Sphere somehow. That's with right. seven of nine. Assimilated. Uh, assimilated. <laughs> That's right. I've taken three Neg Bar class. So he's got 78 points. I've got uh, 122 points. So we're, it's a 200 points that we're taking against this scenario. Um, I got three Neg Vars. On the first one, it's the flagship with uh, Martok um, on it in defense condition one. It's skill. Eight Mardok, and then uh, Koloth, Defense Condition 1, and Kurla on another one, and then Worf with Nagarin on the third one. So, near Klingon space, uh, this aperture opened up, three Borg cubes and Borg Sphere came out, and uh, the Klingons are moving in. 709 has come to assist us with uh, Cyrano Jones uh, oh. and his Tribbles. <laughs> Assimilated Tribbles. Assimilated Tribbles. That's right. They're part of the collective. That's right, Borg Tribbles. <laughs> Okay, so uh, turn one into the uh, Borg invasion of Klingon space. Uh, our fleet just moved up four. Um, all my Klingons cloaked. Uh, you got to put another triple on there, bud. Uh, at the end of the move. Yeah. Oh, it's the end of the move. Yeah, it's the end of the move. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we're out of range, but next turn looking pretty good for some firing going on. It's, I like cooperative missions every once in a while just to, to play in front of the game. Okay, so uh, our first engagement with the Borg, um, uh, we moved up. It didn't, it couldn't use its tractor beam because its action was over um, by the time we uh, moved up. Um, it, these things have initiative, so they do their movement, their actions first. Um, but then uh, the Borg sphere and two of the Negvars were in range to fire, and the Borg sphere used its uh, feedback pulse. And so it only damaged itself with the, with the shot, and then all their ships fired, and uh, two Negvars stripped the uh, shields off, and then the uh, what do you call it? The sphere was able to do ten damage because every crit counts as two hits according to the rules uh, in Endgame. And, uh, and so, the tribbles gave me an extra. Oh, and the tribbles. That's right. Actually, yes. The only reason it's dead is because of his Borg tribbles. So, right. yes. And uh, now he puts a third triple on there. Yeah, it's in Yeah, front. and uh, anyway, we'll see how those triples do. But yeah, this is uh, how it's looking right now. Okay, so uh, this round here, um, the Borg Sphere moved up. Uh, my three Klingon ships uh, uh, moved. Uh, Koloth bumped into the Borg Sphere, but Martok and uh, Worf were able, able to do their turns and then uh, Sensor Echo closer. We did. Uh, uh, my Klingon ships basically stripped the shields down, and then the Borg Sphere got uh, five hits on one of the, the, on the Borg the cube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, took the rest of the shields and got five uh, hits into the cube. <clears throat> so next turn, yeah, it's kind of looking kind of bad in a way, in that next turn we're going to be in range of... Um, we were good, though, because we just missed Just it. there, that's <laughs> right. The Borg Sphere wasn't able to fire, so we were able just to engage with the Borg cube. Uh, he's planning to beam some triples over to that cube because <laughs> he because he's got four triples on there now. Um, yeah, so uh, maybe he wanted it to be kept alive just for this round. I Who did, knows? Yeah. Anyway, uh, we'll be able to probably take out the thing, but now we're going to be in range of two Borg ships, the Borg Sphere and the Borg Cube. So we got to do a lot of damage this turn. I'm guessing I better do a defense condition one here. Um, I have not used any of my defense condition ones yet, and I got two of them. Because we're about to be hit, I'm thinking pretty hard. And uh, oh yes, the Borg tractor beam. I forgot about that. If you get within range of two. If you get range two, yeah, I think I am gonna be in range of two. You don't have to be. Oh, do you know what? They go first. No one's in range two right now. 
so they, they don't get to use their track to beam anyway. So that's really yep. good. That's right, because they, uh, no, we move, and they move last. That's right. That's what we did wrong. Right, 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 right. Well, it hasn't been an issue yet. Hasn't been an issue yet. That's right, because we've all, so far we've, we've always engaged three. gauge three. Yeah. Okay, that's right. So all, we're engaged in range three anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, I forgot that. And the Borg sphere only has a range one on its tractor beam. But, uh, yeah, I'm thinking that one of my ships is going to get tractor beamed here shortly. But, um, yeah, I don't know. This is uh, turning out not too bad, but it's not as easy as I thought. But we'll see how it goes. Okay, uh, so that was quite a round. Um, the Borg sphere and the Borg, and two, the both Borg cubes got to fire. Uh, Worf was the closest, unfortunately. So the Borg uh, cube wounded him, uh, and then the Borg sphere finished him off. Uh, the other Borg cube fired at our sphere, but only took like one shield off. So that wasn't too bad at all. So we lost uh, a Negvar with Worf on it. Then my uh, two Negvars fired at the sphere, took its shields down, and then our sphere, uh, Dan's sphere there, split his fire. He had eight dice, uh, six for the cube, one for the flagship, one for the uh, triple he left on. Did three and five, uh, and then, uh, yeah, blew up both the sphere and the cube, the enemy sphere and the, and the cube, with uh, his split fire. Unbelievable. So, uh, yeah, we just have that aperture left and the board cube. And I'm thinking we just finish off the cube and then finish off the aperture, and that's the end of the game there. So, uh, yeah, this looking not too bad. We did lose an egg bar, but uh, looking pretty good for us. Okay, we weren't able to kill that thing, surprisingly. <laughs> it fired and did some damage to the um, our Borg sphere. It only has our Borg sphere, all its blade of armor is gone. Isn't it? Nope, I still got one left. I still got one left blade of iron. It's got three shields, so um, it's good that way. So that's right. So it's immune to its tractor beam, but uh, the Klingon ships are coming into range there, so they're about to be tractor beamed. Well, only one will be tractor beamed. We'll be able. To, it's only got one hit point left that uh, Borg cube, so it's still alive by one. Too bad we couldn't kill it. And then after we kill it, just taking out the aperture is going to be pretty easy. So only one of our ships is going to be affected, and then we're going to take out the aperture. So we pretty much got this. Uh, I think 200 points might have been uh, a little bit too easy, but maybe if we did like 150, it'd be a little bit harder. But That'd be challenging. That would be challenging. Challenge is good, but looking pretty good. Okay, that's the end of the game right there. Um, uh, marked or it tar it uh, tractor beamed Koloth. Um, our Borg sphere was closer, but um, it's not affected by the target locks or the tractor beam. So we said Koloth was uh, the next closest ship. So it so Koloth lost all his actions and was tractor beamed. But for firing purposes, um, the sphere was closer and uh, it hit the sphere pretty hard. The sphere only has uh, how much hull left? I've got uh, three. Three hull left. And it's got a warp core breach there yep. as well. Warp core breach. Yeah, but be gone next round. No, well, let's see. Roll off and see if he if he if he'd be destroyed next turn. Critical would do it. No, so he's fine. Yeah, uh, and then we just destroy the aperture. Uh, the aperture already lost six uh, shields, shields taken off by the sphere. Martok actually just finished off that last board cube. And like I said, uh, Koloth didn't get a a shot because he was tractor beamed. But uh, I enjoyed that. But uh, I think. 100 or 200 points. 200 points is good though if you want a, a good victory. I think 150 might be a little bit too challenging but uh, I wouldn't mind trying it. Uh, those board cubes are deadly. Um, neither of my neg surviving Negvars have any hits or any damage but his Borg sphere is almost destroyed. It only has a few hull left and I did lose a Negvar. So 200 points might be too many but not by much. For sure, but anyway, what do you think of that scenario? I think uh, you know, 180 would be challenging. Right. 150, it'd be like a Kobayashi Maru. You think so? You know? Yeah. Well, there's only so much you can do. Right. We, we've got to remember, with all, all of the shields up, we're, we we got to do 72 points of damage to 
to take this thing down. Right. And if you come in with just say 150 points, right? They they only have to do 25 points, and they take out your whole. Yeah, that's true. So that, it'd be very very tough. Yeah, we we were able to have the firepower to one shot a cube, um, with uh, four ships. But I don't, as Dan says, we wouldn't have that with just three. But I don't know the three of us were able to take out that last cube there. At a costly price. At a costly price, but anyway. Yeah, the first, uh, the first two cubes, cubes would have taken, yeah, taken a, us down a lot. Yeah. We might still have been able to finish it. Yeah. But it might be down to one ship standing or. That's right. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, that mission that we just did was a success, though, and we were able to, uh, to uh, destroy that. Because next turn we just all turn and destroy the aperture. I don't even have to turn. Yeah, that's right. You don't even have to turn. I'd anyway. be spending an action to get rid of this, though. Yeah, that's true. Moving one up. Yeah. I'd be within range one, so I'd get my extra. Yeah. I'd have seven dice against it. No, oh, yeah, you'd easily do it. And, uh, and yeah, Mark, I could spend this to reroll. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I can okay. do that right now just to see. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you'd have it. Yeah, I got the. Uh... Okay, so we're doing this mission again, this time with only 150 points. It's the end game scenario. Uh, we're using all the rules for the end game uh, thing, except we didn't put the second um, aperture in, we, and we put the uh, Borg Sphere a little bit closer. Uh, but still, the 10 shields, 10 hull, 10 attack for the cubes and uh, sphere axes, uh, the sphere. These guys don't move. They fire first, they have uh, initiative, tractor yeah, tractor beams and all that other fun stuff. Um, but the, sh the scenario doesn't end if a ship is tractor beamed, but uh, it loses its shields and its attack and stuff like that. Now this time we only have uh, 150. He took 75 and I took 75. I took 74. Oh, 74, yeah. So he's got the Borg Cube 4270 with the uh, uh, independent flagship that gives the battle station. He's got Borg blade of armor. He's got the feedback pulse. He's got tactical drone. Sir, Sir, Jones. His Borg, uh, what do you call this? Tribbles actually worked pretty well last time, so he's going to try those again. Now this time I only have two Neg Vars. Um, one has Koloth. One has Martok. And uh, I got the Klingon flagship. And uh, yeah, we'll. Uh, Let's see how this goes here. So we only have 150. I, I took 75 points. He took 74. So 149 against something that's probably yeah, like 240 points. But uh, when we took 200, that was a little bit too much, I think, because we were able to finish pretty strong. But uh, this now will be a big challenge. So story-wise, another aperture is open. Three more Borg cubes come out. Another Borg sphere. Once again, um, a friendly Borg ship is trying to help us close down these. Uh, warp, uh, trans-warp conduits in Klingon space. But only two Negvars are able to, yeah, we can even just say this is, this is the next mission because uh, warp's no longer there, and um, yeah, these are the ships that survived last time, so this can even be like a continuing storyline, so to speak, but uh, yeah. Okay, so his ship moved up four, mine moved up three, um, he wanted me to slow down a bit so we don't bump into each other again. And we're not in range yet, but we're getting close to the uh, that transport conduit. Like I said, this is the second uh, invasion. This is kind of like a campaign thing right now because I lost Warp's Negvar, and so now we're down to 150. We'll see if we can take out this second transwarp conduit and collapse it. So uh, end this Borg invasion of Klingon space. Okay, so the first round of engagement... Um, it's too bad, like I said, my Klingon Negvars weren't closer. First round of engagement, he used the feedback pulse, so uh, the Borg cube fired at him at range 3 and only damaged itself. And then he fired back and took the remainder of its shields off and as well took three da put 3 damage into it. So uh, my Negvars weren't able to fire, but uh, he was able to take all the shields off one of the cubes and, um, and hurt it pretty bad. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I am seeing the danger now. I don't know if we'll be able to make it through all three cubes and sphere. But uh, that was a pretty good start, to be honest. We'll see how this goes. Okay, that worked out pretty good. Uh, 
the 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 board cube there that was just destroyed uh, had been wounded in the previous turn by the sphere. Then Martok fired and brought it within an inch of its life, and then Koloth fired on his Negvar from his Negvar and destroyed it. So um, our sphere and our two Negvars are looking really good, and one of the cubes is destroyed already. The sphere didn't even fire this round. That's right. The sphere didn't even need to fire because that's right. He was not in range of anything else, and the, the second Negvar was able Koloth's Negvar was able to destroy the cube. Uh, but now uh, it gets messy. It's going to get messy. It's it's definitely going to get messy. Yeah, if you had been able to fire this turn, uh, yeah, we might be able to take the cube out at a turn at a time. Still, we I think we got the firepower to do it. Because if you had been able to fire, like that would just been like last turn. If we if we do well, we can take out a cube a turn. The only problem is right now you can see how close that sphere. That's the killer, and that's the trick right there. The sphere is right behind that. Uh, board cube. So, uh, I don't know, I, I kind of like this as a solo mission and we'll see if we, we win. Uh, I'm kind of anxious and I like that. I like the suspense. With 200, I was pretty confident that we could win. But now, the confidence is gone. That feels good. <laughs> okay, so, um, big, big, uh, silly thing. I should have went two and three instead of one and two banks because, um, unfortunately, Martok was not in range to fire that turn. So we were able to do, take off the shields of that cube and do three damage into it, but not able to destroy it. And that means we're moving into range of a cube and a sphere. And that's just not good. And he has no shields left. Uh, our friendly sphere has no shields. Still has a, it's a blade of armor, but no shields. And uh, this is, and we're moving into a bad situation right now with, uh, with what's about to happen here. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not as confident now all of a sudden with what's about to happen. Okay, so um, that was an expensive round force. Uh, Kolos Negvar uh, was the closest, and he got tractor beam, so he lost his attack. And anyway, um, we have the Borg firing first. Anyway, so the Borg were able to destroy him. Um, both the cube and the, the cube took him within an inch of his life, and then the sphere finished him off. Um, but that allowed uh, the Negvar to fire and bring the uh, cube to within an inch of one, inch of its life. Hole. Yeah, one hole. And then our sphere fired, uh, split, split fire. his fire again. Very useful. Uh, I think we used it last game too. And he just finished off the cube, and then. Uh, took all the shields and took, did one damage into the sphere. So, um, yeah, we're, it, it's, it's looking not too bad. Um, I, I still don't know if we're going to win because we still have a healthy uh, cube after this and we still have to deal with that sphere. But, and we're down like a, a Negvar now, we're down a third of our points. But, uh, and his, our, um, our sphere has no shields but still has his blade of armor. Yep. But uh, we'll see how this I've goes. Got five, uh... Tribbles. <laughs> that's right. I'll be sending some <laughs> over some. Anyway, that's uh, that's how it's looking. Okay, so that was a better round than I thought. That's looking actually not too bad. Um, his uh, cube only took a, a hit, a single hit from the um, uh, enemy sphere, or his our sphere only took one hit from the enemy sphere. Yep. Um, which he, took my tribbles, thankfully. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> which took his tribbles. Uh, Martok fired and his Negvar destroyed the enemy sphere then. Then our sphere fired, uh, took all the shields and did three damage into the uh, Borg aperture. But now here comes the hardest part of our adventure, taking out that last cube. And I'm not sure how we're going to do this, but... Um, yeah, it, it's boldly. Boldly, <laughs> that's right. But anyway, 150 it looks doable here, but it's going to be tough. Uh, we just have one more board cube to deal with. Okay, so we did it. That was nice. Um, he was the closest, and uh, he couldn't be tractor beam because of the blade of armor. Um, so that was good. And then. Uh, uh, the Borg sphere f or the Borg fired cube me. fired at him and brought him within an inch of his life. <laughs> yeah, well, so he's, he he doesn't have many hit points. He used a, some of the blade of armor. Still has some of the blade of armor. I keep... spent my uh, 
My battle station. He spent his battle station to defend himself because uh, he has uh, an evade with the uh, with the triple and with the. Um, yeah, sorry, two evades, but I. Uh, yeah, the Borg triple. <laughs> Anyway, then the Negvar uh, fired and finished off that cube, and then our sphere fired and finished off the aperture. So if you ever do this, uh, 200 points will almost guarantee you victory. 150 is tight, but it can be done. Yeah, it, it, at this point, all it was dice at the end. If, oh, it was. If I'd have been taken out, you wouldn't have stood a chance. No, because, because then he would have just tractor beamed me, and I wouldn't be able to yep. fire, and he'd destroy me. Yeah, no, I needed you to be in front to absorb the tractor beam and the fire. Um, and uh, But that was good. So Klingon space was protected once again. Um, Costly. <laughs> Costly, that's right. I lost another Negvar. <laughs> I'm spending a Negvar per... But actually, loss of one Negvar to take out three Borg cubes and a Borg sphere and a Borg aperture. conduit aperture uh, is pretty good. But uh, that's a lot of fun uh, for uh, a cooperative mission. Uh, like I said, 200 points, it's nice, easy if you have new players. And 150 points uh, if you're doing, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, if you want a bit of a challenge, if you've got two experienced well, players. Well, I think, uh, to, in all fairness, right. you couldn't do a 150 point unless you had a somebody wearing a blade of armor. Oh, you armor. need the blade of armor, that's right, to absorb the uh, tractor beam. Yeah. Yeah, you absolutely do. So Voyager or a, um, or a Borg sphere, you need that to absorb the... Because you, unless you take enough ships that you can take them out at range three, because once you get in range two, and then he's taking out a ship. Yep. And the fact that um, in this scenario, the Borg have initiative, so they're firing first um, and going last, so they can tractor beam you at the end of the movement phase, and then they can fire. It's it's pretty brutal. So you do need a blade of armor for sure. But uh, I think it was a fun mission. Uh, I, I, I like I like cooperative. I like cooperative. And not only that, I like the 150 better because 100, with 200 points, I was pretty confident. I was thinking we'd have to be pretty incompetent uh, to not do this. But 150, especially near the end, I was like, oh, you know, this could be tight. And that's that's the way a battle should, should be. Anyway, that's a lot of fun, uh, that end game scenario. Uh, taking out three Borg cubes and a Borg sphere and a Borg conduit um, uh, for cooperative and stuff like that. A lot of fun.